The group gathered together at 9 a.m. on July 20th at Beijing Xinjiakou subway station. Among the blind and visually impaired who gathered were singers, massage therapists, and pianists. Their tour of the city was organized by the Hongdan Dan Braille Community, a nonprofit organization for the blind in Beijing. For most participants, it was their first time traveling in a group. Their first stop was the Museum of Mei Lanfang, a famous Peking opera singer. Twenty-four-year-old Zhou Tong is a music editor for a radio station in Beijing. She told us what it's like to commute as a blind person. I usually take subway line five. Walking through the subway station is quite safe for us. The walking path for the blind can actually be a bit dangerous, so I never use them. I can usually remember conventional routes quickly after taking them two or three times. Although she did say the subway is generally safe, Joe did have a dangerous experience last year when she missed her step and fell off the subway platform. Fortunately, she was able to get off the tracks before another train came. My left arm was broken. Were you hospitalized? The doctor just gave me a cast for my arm. It took about two months to recover. Although the volunteers tried to describe what they were seeing for their blind friends, not all of the blind and visually impaired were able to create a picture in their mind. But using their hands helped them get a clearer image. It isn't deep. Less deep than I imagined. This is Paul. This feels like a ball. Does it have a tail? Yes, it does. But the tail isn't very clear. Yes, it doesn't feel very clear. Can you find its eyes? Yes, they are here. After a short stay at the museum, the visitors went to the Hu Guo Temple Nashery, which is famous for its snacks and halal food. The group feasted on steamed rice cakes. Glutinous rice rolls stuffed with red bean paste, sweet pea cake, and fried cream cake. Most of them said they rarely get a chance to eat such foods. This is your dish. There is a piece of pea cake in it. Here are some chopsticks. How does it taste? It's delicious. No one's ever taken me here, and I don't know the prices, so I could never order anything. The group also enjoyed some Peking opera singing, courtesy of Mr. Zhang, an opera singer who prepared a classic piece for his audience. He also taught them how to sing it. After hearing him sing, one of the group's members wanted to give it a try. After lunch, the group headed for their last stop, Yuan Mingyuan Park. Yuan Mingyuan, also known as the Imperial Gardens, is a large complex of palaces and gardens in Beijing. In the lakes of Yuan Mingyuan, lotuses are now in full summer bloom, bright pink and yellow blossoms amidst a sea of round green leaves. Joe and the rest of the group took a ferry in a lake known as the Sea of Fortune. I once came to this park, but never took a boat in the lake. But on the boat, we feel nice and cool. Twenty-four-year-old Wu Shuang went to school with Joe. He's been in Beijing for a couple years, but had never been to the park before until the group made its visit. He said he enjoyed the speed of the boat, adding that he once rode a motorboat in the South China Sea and that he would like to do so again sometime. Starting from childhood, most people believe that the handicapped need more attention and sympathy. If you see us in this way, it is no use to organize activities like we did today. Many people think we are helpless. This means we should have more opportunities to interact with the world. I think there is still a long way for the public to view us as equal members of society.